So let's bring in CBS News contributing meteorologist Jeff Baradelli. Good to see you. Good to be here. All right, so let's talk this polar vortex. Uh, explain why it's so cold and how cold is it expected to get? All right, the polar vortex is really just a big counterclockwise swirl, big circulation, a big cyclone up in the Arctic, typically in the Arctic, although it has kind of lost its way and it's located now across the Great Lakes. So you can see where the polar vortex is right now. A big whirling dervish, if you will, of cold air. And sometimes a piece of that polar vortex breaks off. And that is what has happened. So temperature today. I mean, we're talking high, not low temperatures, but high temperatures during the day today. We're about to show you and they will stay below zero in a lot of parts of the upper Midwest. Uh, 13 below Minneapolis. It stays at nine below for a high temperature today in Chicago, four below in Detroit. But tonight it gets worse because the wind chills overnight tonight with a combination of the wind and the actual temperatures. In New York City, 14 to 20 below when you wake up tomorrow morning. So do not go outside. Maybe stay inside if you can tomorrow. You hear uh, that Detroit, control room? That's right. I know. You we're guys not, we're not coming in. Playing hooky from work. That's what I was suggesting. Jeff. I'm glad you brought it up and not me. Preach. 51 below <laughs> is how it's going to feel in Chicago tomorrow morning. This is dangerous cold weather. Yeah, yeah. And so let's talk about that because yeah. you know we say dangerously cold weather moving in, and sometimes it sort of rolls off our tongue, and people don't really have an idea of what we mean by dangerously cold weather. What are we talking about? Frostbite in five minutes or less if you Whoa. expose your skin because there's a little layer of heat that kind of sticks close to your skin when the wind blows it away very quickly your skin can freeze so you got to be really careful so some people have historically they look at this historic cold weather and they say how can climate change be mm -hmm. happening and like, I mean we were sort of alluding to it earlier the president of the United States sort of on Twitter not the first time has pointed out and he tweeted this yeah. wind chill temperatures reaching minus 60 degrees in coming days expected to get even colder what the hell is going on with global warming? Please come back fast. We need you. <laughs> yeah. What is he missing there? All right. So first of all, I want to show you a map of the world right now and show you what's going on in the world. Uh, there's a theory out there. What you see is all there is. Well, that's what happens. People often kind of observe the world as their stage of where, where they are locally. But take a look at that map of the whole world. Notice those two ice cubes floating in a sea of warm across the United States, the blue, across Siberia, the blue. But everybody else is warm. Temperatures are above average across the world right now, as you can see. So just because it's cold where you are doesn't mean it's cold everywhere. Right now, temperatures around the globe are warmer than normal. So and you can see Australia is experiencing oh, record heat. The heat wave there has been devastating. Animals are dying. Fish are dying. Birds are dying. Wildfires. It's a really big deal there, yes. Mm -hmm. So, But there is a theory that sort of connects climate change to yeah colder temperatures in some places. Explain that. Yeah, so this theory has been around for about five years or so. There's a, a pretty decent amount of scientific evidence to back it up now, but it's still not set in stone. So let's describe it for you. The polar vortex is very cold. It causes a very strong jet stream around the Arctic, but when it starts to get warmer, uh, the Arctic is amplifying. It's getting warmer up there at two to three times the pace of the rest of the globe. It kind of disrupts the jet stream. It breaks apart the polar vortex. It splits and pieces of the polar vortex can go further south. Now this kind of thing happens almost on a yearly basis, but it seems like it may be happening a little bit more a disruption in the polar vortex because of Arctic amplification. Mm. So that's the normal position of the polar vortex. Very strong jet stream kind of corralling the cold air in place. But when the polar vortex starts to break because of Arctic amplification because of the warmer air, this is what happens a chunk or piece of the polar vortex will break off and head south and you can end up with extreme cold during a global warming situation mm. so it may be counterintuitive but climate change is associated with extremes of weather and that sometimes not often but sometimes can mean extreme cold yeah so the question that a lot of people will toss out there when they're having discussions around climate change is the science is not all there. They'll yeah. say that some groups who want to promote the theory of climate change, some scientists agree on a certain set of theories, and another group of scientists say that's absolutely not true. My science proves that climate change isn't happening. Right. So the theory that you just posited to us, what, what are scientists saying? Right. So climate change overall, that's not disputed. There's a tremendous scientific consensus. This one is a fairly new theory, and if you ask leading scientists, they think it's interesting. There are a lot of scientists that are studying it. There's some new evidence. There's been research the past couple of years supporting this disruption, but a lot of scientists will say 
we're not there yet. It's not set in stone. We still need more research and we need to refine our computer models so we can pick patterns out of the noise. There's a lot of noise, a lot of normal climate variability. So this could be climate variability. We cannot say that this particular cold air outbreak is caused by climate change. However, it may load the dice. Hmm. Um, yep. So before we let you go, we have been showing sort of an image. We showed it earlier today of Chicago, the lake in Chicago, so with cool. this, with, which what almost looks like steam coming off the it lake. Is. So yeah. Can you explain what we're yeah. looking at here? It's called steam fog. It's really cold in the air and it's relatively warm in the water. It, it actually is kind of the same mechanism that would cause lake effect snow to form. It's essentially evaporation uh, and condensation of the water uh, there right. because of the very cold air. The cold air just kind of condenses uh, the water vapor that's in the atmosphere. I've seen this in Miami when the temperature was about 38, 39 degrees during the day, but the water temperature was like 70 something. It's amazing to see in South Florida. It only happens maybe once a decade or so. It's always a cool sight to see. Oh, well, I would say, yeah. you know, the weather's beautiful to look at. It but really not to be is, out in. Not exactly. to be out in. Right. Yeah, sure. Uh, Jeff, always great to have you. I'm glad we were able to have a discussion uh, around the the theories as to why these extreme temperatures are happening as opposed to just having uh, some live shots out in the snow because right. I think those are important to let people know how dangerous it is out there but understanding the science behind it is also really valuable. And being honest about the uncertainty That's right. because that lends credibility to scientists. Great point. Yeah. Thank you Jeff. You're welcome.